Hi, this is Steve. I'm just going to give you a quick overview and tutorial of using NetBeans with Java. Uh, first of all, you'll see here that this is running NetBeans version 7.1.2. Uh, the full SDK of Java is already installed and the two are linked. In fact, they were installed as a package. What I'm going to do is give a tutorial of using the uh, Java programming to create a bubble sort program outputting to the standard out. So I'm not using Swing or any of the GUI libraries here. This is just getting used to the NetBeans IDE, Integrated Development Environment, and writing programs, compiling and running them. So the first thing we need to do is create a project in NetBeans. So you'll see up at the top here, there's a, a button here to open previous projects and to create new ones. So let's create a project. Uh, we'll create a Java project and a Java application. I click on Next, and now I get to add the name of the project and the location. You'll see the location at the moment is already a uh, Java example on the C drive, and the name of the project, let's call this uh, Bubble Sort. So, Bubble Sort, there we go. And you'll notice that it's going to create a main class and um, also set this as the main project. Uh, that, that's uh, If I have more than one project, then the main one is the one that runs when I hit run. In this case, it's just the one project. So that's fine. Let's hit finish. And it whirs away, and it creates uh, the basis for programming. Over on the left here, you can see the project folder with all the different subfolders and contents, including the bubblesort.java programming file that's been created. Over here on the right hand side you can see the, uh, the source code itself and in tabs along the top will be any other code that I have linked to this project. Uh, straight away you can also see that NetBeans has added in comments uh, some sections where I need to actually add my code in the main function. Uh, up along the top are all the various commands for uh, operating the compiler. So for example if I want to run I can click on the green arrow there and I can see down here the results of that. The build was successful. So let's start adding some code and see what happens. First of all, I have a main function here. So let's uh, add some code in here. So I'll replace the uh, placeholder they've given me. And let's have an integer array, a couple of integer arrays. Let's have one called pre sort array and in fact we'll have a, another one called post sort array. There we are. All lines of course have to be finished with a semicolon like this. Uh, let's now put some random numbers into my pre-sort array for my bubble sort to work. So I can say pre-sort array <clears throat> equals, and now I'm going to run a, a function, a method, which I haven't written yet, which is going to be called random array generator. There we are, that's the name of my method. And it's no parameters at the moment. I'll come back and add those in a moment. And then once I've filled the array with random numbers. I might want to print that out to the standard out. So I might do system dot out dot print line and so on. As I do this, you'll note uh, that all the appropriate methods pop up here and I can see uh, which ones I, I need to select. So in this case, I could select that one there. And now I can just add some text here. So I could say the pre sorted array is and then just concatenate in the, uh, the the array. Now I'm going to use one of the libraries called arrays to do this. Arrays dot and I have dot to string to string I need to give the name of the arrays, which is pre-sort array. There we go. Now, 
Now one thing to note here is I'm using the arrays library uh, and I haven't actually added the import and sure enough it comes up saying I can't find the symbol and there's an error. NetBeans is great because it shows you over on the left hand margin here any errors in your code that are appearing and you can try and fix those as well. Over on the right hand side you can see the little red dashes here. That's the length of your entire code from top to bottom and any problems are shown as little bars across. And the other thing to note is up in the top right hand corner here is a square which is currently red. It tells me there's two errors. I want that to be green before it compiles. Um, so first of all I need to fix this import here so I can right mouse click there and fix imports. And you'll notice what that's done is it's put this line up here, import javautils.arrays. That brings in that, that library of function. Uh, the problem I have here is it can't find the uh, method for the random array generator. Again, I can ask NetBeans to help me solve that. I can right mouse click and insert the code. And I can get it to create the method random array generator. There we are. So that's now ready to be implemented. There's just a message there waiting for me to edit saying that it hasn't been implemented. Uh, let's now add another method, which would be uh, the post sort array equals, and the method here is going to be um, array bubble sort. And it's going to sort, of course, my pre sort array. There we go, and again that's showing an error. I suspect it's that I haven't put the semicolon at the end. I can just do that, and there the error goes. And I want another system out. Let's just copy that line down, that's a bit easier. And I say post sorted array is post sort array. So again I'm having an error message here, it's telling me the method array bubble sort isn't uh, available. So I can click that and say create the method. Now I've got a couple of stubs here ready for me to add the code in. Uh, let's just have another um, line just above here with the initial message. So this is going to say bubble sort demonstration. There we go. So that is the end of my class main method. And now I'm ready to add code to the two methods down here, random array generator and array bubble sort. Let's do the random array generator first. So let's get rid of this line here and start adding code. So the first thing is I want to have a integer array held locally as a private. Uh, let's call that random random array, and I'll declare that as a as a new integer array of length. Well. length because what I need to do is to uh, in my generator add some parameters and um, what you might say is the first would be the, the, the minimum number for random numbers so if we say int minimum number let's have another parameter that gives me the maximum random number it might generate and then I want to know how long the array is going to be uh, so I might say an integer might be length. So there we are. I've got three parameters and then I create the random array like this. Immediately it's throwing uh, some errors here because I've called uh, the function up here without these parameters being set. I'll come back to that in a moment. Uh, so and then I might want to have a for loop going around my new array. So for int 
let's have a counter i started at naught keep on going until i gets to the length and increment the counter i now the other good thing about net beads is you can add a curly brace at the end of this loop and when i hit return you see it's put the other curly brace in just below also when you move the cursor over the curly brace it shines up in yellow and it shows you the other one the matching brace in yellow so you can make sure you've got your code sorted um, so let's rnd let's populate this random array at position at position i with a value so we'll say it has to be from the minimum plus Let's cast a random number as an integer. Use the built-in language math a method random and multiply that by the max minus the min plus one and finish the whole thing off with a semicolon. So as I go around my random array, I'm adding the random numbers, and then when I finish that, I just return the rnd array. Now that return value is accepted because there's the return, and I've got the parameters passing in. So back up here in my main, where I call this, um, I need to add some parameters. So let's say I have a random numbers that start at 1, uh, perhaps could go up to 99, and I want my array to be a length of 10, for example. So that's, that's that finished. The next thing to do is to add the array bubble sort code. So the array bubble sort code uh, currently has this placeholder, and let's just remove that. Let's um, have some code. So first of all I need a, a, a boolean variable. Let's call this unswapped. Uh, set it off as true. You have true or false. I'll just pause here because this is a good time to show the, the way that the code can be reformatted. Uh, it's never worth spending any time with tab tab keys and space spaces setting out the code because up here on the source uh, menu there's a very nice function format and when I select that it just reformats the code for me so you could just do that from time to time or just remember alt shift f to format the code okay so let's have some uh, variables so I have int count equals zero. I have another integer temporary. This is for when I swap the values around and a counter called i. Finish off with a semicolon. And first thing I need to do is to check to see if the array that's been passed in is a length of one because if it is there's nothing to sort. So I could say if If the uh, now my um, my variable my parameter coming in is pre-sort array. Let, let's just call that let's just call that array. So if if the array length like that test it if it's one. So if the length is one, I just want to return. So return array. So there's nothing to sort there just need to add the semicolon in there. However, if it's greater than one, I need to do my sorting. So let's put a while loop in here, while unswapped. Notice I'm just doing a, a while, uh, the Boolean variable is being tested whilst unswapped. Uh, add my curly brace, hit return. You can see I've got that code block there ready to take the code. Uh, the first thing I might do is un swapped equals false. Okay, there's my variable. Unswapped is false. And now I need to step around the array, which I now know is 
more than one long so at least uh, I can pick up values as I go around so four now let's have my eye counter start off at one and I is less than array dot length and increment i. So you'll notice here that I'm starting, although array is a zero indexed, and normally that would be a zero on i, in this case I start at one, in other words position two in the array, uh, because I'm going to check that value with the previous value as I go through the array and sort it. So in my for loop there, I can now add a curly brace, hit return, again there's my pairing of the curly brace, and now I can actually check to see uh, if, if, the, if the array is greater or less than the value of the one before. So if the array i minus 1, so if the value of the previous array element is in fact greater than the value of the current one, then I need to do a sort. So I can add a curly brace again. So I've got lots of these nested curly braces now. So now this is if I do need to sort it. So I've declared a temporary variable. So what I can do is just set the temporary variable quickly to hold the previous value, array i minus 1. There we go. And now I can swap over those two values. So I can say array i minus 1, set that value to the value that's currently in array i, like that. And then I simply just need to write that temporary value back out again, so array i uh, equals temp. There we are, so that's just swap those values around. And if I do that, I also need to set my and swap my boolean so it's true there. Okay, and um, I also want to keep a count of how many uh, times I'm going around the the loop because, of course, this algorithm is iterative. There's many, many times it needs to sort. So if I just say count plus plus, I've got my count going on there. Okay, so now I just need to uh, write out some information about how it was. Uh, how it was, uh, how many iterations it went. So let's say at the end, if if it was not un uh, unswapped, in other words, if it did swap, I can add a curly brace again. There's my curly brace. System dot out dot print line. I could say the array was sorted in, and I've got that counter, so I can say plus count passes like that, full stop, end with a semicolon, there we go, and I suppose if it was, wasn't was sorted I might need to mention that, so I could say else Add the curly brace, hit return again, there I am. And it's just as easy to copy that, so just copy that down there and say the array array remained, remained unsorted. There we go. Add the semicolon at the end. And one way or the other I need to return the array, uh, which is here, so I still have to return the sorted array and finish with a semicolon. Um, if I'm saving code, now I can just go up here and there's the button save all. Okay, the next thing to do is just to make sure the program runs. I'm just looking up and down to see if I'm happy with the code. I'm also looking over here to see if everything's okay. Here it is. And finally I'm looking up here to see if the green button is lit up in the top corner. No errors it says, that's great. So I should be able to just run the code and there it is.